How do you represent three-dimensional space on a flat, two-dimensional canvas? It's accomplished through some visual trickery. Illusion, Michael. Mm. Trick is something a whore does for money. In the world of art, objects are represented in three-dimensional space through perspective, a technique that gives the linear illusion of depth and space using relative size and position. It's something that seems simple now, but early painters struggled with the idea. Linear perspective is a type of perspective that allows the viewer to visualize depth and see objects realistically in space. Using the image of train tracks, we can better understand this. Orthogonal or parallel lines meet at a single vanishing point. The vanishing point sits on a horizon line, which is where our eye level is. We can see the tops of objects when they are below the horizon line, and objects that are above the horizon line we are looking up at. During the Middle Ages, paintings were usually flat, subjects looked out of place, and vanishing points were often wrong. Although artists didn't have a system for accurately displaying perspective yet, they understood that objects got smaller the further away they were. This technique wasn't always used though, as art from the Middle Ages was heavily influenced by religious imagery. Artists often used a certain hierarchy in their depictions of figures, where more powerful figures took up more space on a canvas than inferior ones did. Art from ancient Egypt and the Byzantine era are good examples of this. Going outside of Europe and Africa, artists in China had a system for showing depth that was unique to their culture. Since Chinese art was typically done on a very long hand scroll and meant to be viewed one section at a time, there wasn't a need for realistic perspective with a common vanishing point. The traditional method of depicting space was with isometric projection, where parallel lines don't merge. Instead, they are laid out in a way that they are undistorted by perspective, but still give the illusion of depth. This system allows the viewer to shift perspective as their eyes move across the painting, and discover the scene in a unique way. Isometric projection is also used in engineering drawings and 3D design because it is easy to understand. Starting in the 14th century, artists like Duccio de Buenesena and Giotto de Bondone used what is known as convergent perspective, which used a similar idea. Parallel lines converge together. But if you look at the parallel lines, they don't align correctly at a common vanishing point. The understanding at the time was that objects above eye level would move away from the viewer, and objects below eye level would move towards the viewer. Despite the shortcomings in perspective, these works were an important step forward. There is evidence to suggest that ancient Greeks and Romans used a system of linear perspective in their artwork as well. This fresco painting from the villa of Publius Phanias Senestor in ancient Rome near Pompeii is a good example. But like other systems, it wasn't flawless. There are multiple vanishing points scattered around the painting. Whatever system these ancient artists had, it was lost by the Middle Ages. The idea of linear perspective in art that we know today was first used around 1415 by an artist and architect named Filippo Brunelleschi. Brunelleschi experimented with a mathematical system of lines that met at a single vanishing point. A famous experiment of his was done while standing in front of the baptistry in Florence. He used a painting with a hole in it and a mirror to compare his own perspective with the perspective of the painting. His experiments proved to be a success, and he was able to draw a building with incredible realism. These original perspective experiments have since been lost, but Brunelleschi's ideas spread. Writer Leon Battista Alberti wrote about Brunelleschi's technique in a book called On Painting. The idea of linear perspective spread across Florence and slowly throughout Europe by artists who traveled through Italy. The first artist to fully understand and integrate Brunelleschi's technique into his work was early Renaissance painter Masaccio. His paintings had realistic depth and almost flawless perspective. By the late 1400s and early 1500s, Renaissance painters such as Leonardo da Vinci 
Michelangelo Buonarroti, and Raphael Sanzio were using the same system to create iconic Renaissance masterpieces. Artists of the time stuck with a very basic system of perspective, with a single, centrally positioned vanishing point. This was the dominating style for almost 400 years. Going back to the idea of linear perspective, using a single vanishing point is called one-point perspective. If we add another vanishing point to a drawing, this will give us two-point perspective, which is best illustrated by looking at the corner of a building. Both sides of the building have a separate vanishing point. This technique is useful in showing a realistic view of an object from an angle. Two-point perspective is thought to have started with John Pellerin, who wrote the first illustrated book on perspective in 1505. Although two-point perspective was understood around this time, it was rarely used by Renaissance artists. It wasn't until 1651 that it was first used successfully by Dutch artist Gerard Hoogeest in his painting of church interiors. Three-point perspective is the least used method of linear perspective, but closer in how we actually see the world. It is usually used to illustrate buildings from an extreme top-down or bottom-up view. The biggest difference here is that the third vanishing point isn't on the horizon line, but instead it's placed above or below the object. Linear perspective was used as an essential tool throughout the Renaissance, and it carried over to the movements that followed. Baroque, Neoclassicism, Realism, and even Impressionism. It wasn't until the end of the 19th century that the idea was challenged. With the growing popularity of photography, perspective could be captured instantly by people with no artistic merit. All right, let's head out. Which made painting realistic imagery less desirable for artists. French painter Paul Cezanne broke away from these established rules of perspective. His work allowed each object in a painting to be perceived independently. His artistic approach inspired artists of the Cubism movement that followed, such as Pablo Picasso and George Brock. Cubism further separated itself from traditional rules and showed multiple aspects of the same object simultaneously. Abstract artists in later years, such as Vasily Kandinsky, Robert Delaunay, and Kazimir Malevich would remove perspective entirely, focusing on color, line, and simple shapes. In addition to linear perspective, atmospheric perspective is the idea that objects are less focused and lighter in color when they are further away. As objects recede into the background, we see more of Earth's atmosphere, and objects appear more blue and less saturated. Atmospheric perspective can be found as far back as ancient Rome. It was also used by Chinese painters as early as the 8th century. Today, it's easy to imagine art in 3D. We have tools that automatically capture flawless perspective, by default. We have devices in our pockets that can do the work for us. But artists today also have a choice. They can use perspective and ground their work in reality, or intentionally avoid it to give the viewer a new perspective. What are your thoughts on this subject? Is perspective something you notice when you see art, or something you only notice when it's gone? Also, what do you think about the idea of cubism or systems that avoid perspective? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the bell.